this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And we're your co-hosts. We also are joined by Stacy Kennedy, our cultural correspondent, who's also going to be uh, one of our uh, moderators this time. And I always like to begin, Will, with talking about your t-shirt. But I can't do that. But you are wearing a sweatshirt. So tell us about that. Gladly. This week's this week's sweatsh week is my Bart sweatshirt. I I I write Bart. I I take Bart. And and I did an internship for Bart for for Julie Yim last year. Did you enjoy your internship? I sure did. It it was it was like it was like working for working for someone for someone famous. Excellent. Always good to hear from you and your tie-ins. So today's program, uh, we have uh, as a special guest, author Anne K. Ross, who has written the book, let me make sure I get the title, Anne, <laughs> Beyond uh, Rain Man, mm -hmm. uh, What One Psychologist Learned Raising a Son on the Autism Spectrum. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we get into the questions with you, Anne, uh, we'll begin with uh, Stacy Kennedy, our cultural correspondent. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everybody. There's a sensory friendly film that's happening uh, August 13th. Pete's Dragon starting at 10 a.m. is going to show. And the location, it's, there's various locations. What you want to do is go to www.amctheaters.com slash programs slash sensory friendly films. Uh, Saturday, August 13th is uh, the Ascend Annual Picnic in Golden Gate Park from noon to 3 p.m. in Lindley, L-I-N-D-L-E-Y, Meadows. And all are welcomed for an afternoon of informal socializing and games with our community. Foods and drinks are available, but bring something of your own to share if you can. No RSVP necessary. Uh, we will be at tables five to nine. And then again, this is in Golden Gate Park in Lind Lee Meadows, the Ascend Picnic, August 13th. There's an autistics meeting at the San Jose Rose Garden either Saturday, August 20th or August 21st. It's still to be determined, but there will be, um, there will be a meeting there where we'll sit in a shady side of Nagli Drive or Avenue in, in South San Jose where um, you can just talk about things that's going on in your life or anything on your mind with the Autastics group. And that starts at 1 p.m., either August 20th or 21st. Again, that's to be determined, but what you can do is go to www.autastics.org to find out more information for that group. And then, um, and this is a couple months away, but it's a good thing to get a jump start on it to let you know that August, Saturday, October 8th, is the Ascend Autastics Conference at San Francisco State. Um, and the title is Neurodiversity Leaders. And it's adult autism advances, and speakers and admissions and meals are to be determined. And so it's a good thing to uh, get this out soon so you can uh, make a registration. Anyhow, that is all I have today. Well, thank you, Stacy. We always appreciate your cultural commentary you. and calendar. And uh, I understand to begin with, you'll be uh, introducing our author, Ann K. Ross, and uh, discussing uh, her book. Yes. Mm -hmm. So today we um, are talking with um, author of Beyond Rain Man, Ann Ross. Mm -hmm. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. Same here. Yeah. So um, your book, I um, first off, I want to say that I read it and it was just amazing and just uh, it wow it just reminds me of things that I went through as an individual and probably others to have felt the same way so um, I guess the first question is what inspired you to write this book mm. well first of all thanks very much for saying that because it means a lot to me yes. um, you know writing books I have lots of author friends and writing books is, is difficult mm -hmm. and sharing these personal stories is, is difficult too. And so that just makes me feel so good that you, you saw something in it and, and, yeah. and felt something in it. So what inspired me to write this book? 
was a few things probably. I um, raised a son who has Asperger's and there were good times and there were rough times. Mm -hmm. And I found myself during the rough times writing in a journal, you know, mm -hmm. just writing. And it's interesting because I, when, th when, you know, we had plenty of good times, but I didn't write then because we were just living life and enjoying ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when things got rough, um, I kept journals. And so that was for me. And that helped me get through some of those times. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also work with um, mostly children on the autism spectrum. And I felt at some point that maybe if I shared some of these stories, it would be helpful. Mm -hmm. It would be helpful to other parents, and it might even be helpful to the professionals who work with kids on the spectrum, teachers, psychologists, um, professionals um, in the schools and privately. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote it. I wanted to get that out in the world. I mean, I'm a school psychologist. I help people, and I hope my book helps people. Tell us about your background as a psychologist and how you came to work with youth on the autism spectrum. Okay. Um, I've been a school psychologist for 31 years. I'm starting my 32nd year next week. And, of course, I've worked with all sorts of children. School psychologists do some counseling, but mostly they do testing to see if kids have either a learning disability or a social disability. Uh, I've worked with kids from age three up to 21. And uh, what else? What was the second part to your question? How you came to work with youth on the autism spectrum. Thank you, that is a good question. So when my son was 11 years old, we finally figured out that he has Asperger's syndrome. And that of course was very um, important and emotional time for us. And it also made me then, of course, more interested in the autism spectrum. And you know, my son is on the autism spectrum and I work with kids and now I could understand a lot more because of my experience with my son. So I've learned from my son and I've learned from the kids that I've worked with. And so now I work with all kinds of kids, but many, many kids on the autism spectrum. In the in the book, you in the book you say you have kept a di you have kept diaries for years. Tell us about that process. Well, that's like when I was talking with Stacy about when things were difficult for us as a family. I found myself early in the morning or late at night or whenever I was upset. You know, I talk in the book about my son's meltdowns and even parents have meltdowns sometimes. So I would get upset and I would find myself going to write in the journals just about everything, about what was so hard and what I didn't understand, and then later, what I did understand. And it, it, it helped me somewhat to be a better parent, but um, it didn't fix everything because we're all human. <laughs> how, did you trans how did you translate the diaries into a book? Then, so with these diaries, I knew that I wanted to share some of what was in there, maybe not everything. And I had this idea of, of writing lots of short little pieces, not you know one long big book like a novel or a long memoir, but short pieces. And so what I ended up doing was categorizing them in different areas, like there's a section on sensory defensiveness, and I would, I would show some scenes with my son being um, it could, he couldn't tolerate having sunscreen put on his body. Uh, so there's a little scene about that. Uh, there's another, maybe called a chapter, on a preference for routine. My son needed a lot of routine. He needed to be forewarned about changes to that routine. Uh, there's a whole section on what I call tantrum land. And I know that currently we're changing some of our language in the field and, and there's a distinction between tantrums and meltdowns. And, um, part of that is semantics, but, uh, but I do talk a lot about that because that was very difficult for us. Um, there's a section on the literal mind, just being literal and, and concrete, smart, but literal and concrete, um, and, and several others like that. So that's how I kind of took my very personal experiences from the diaries and, and put them in book form. So Anne, um, my, next, my question um, next is, uh, how, um, 
how is your son doing now these days and how have things changed over the years with himself and between you two? Mm -hmm. He is 23 now mm -hmm. and he went to college for two years and again did well academically but in order to take three or four classes it was just very very difficult for him to manage. Mm -hmm. So he has stopped going to school. He also said something that was very interesting to me, and that was he listens to um, podcasts of things that are interesting to him, oh. which are a lot of things, politics and, um, and computers and lo lots of things. And he told me that in one year of listening to podcasts, he learned more than he learned at two years in college. So... Um, so he learns differently, we know that, and he needs to figure out how he learns. And he also is very articulate about the, the weaknesses in traditional education for kids mm -hmm. on the spectrum, kids and young adults. And so he is currently working almost full time as a lifeguard at a community pool. Oh, He's wow. been doing that for years. He's a big strapping guy. He's gone in once or twice, and he's also identified this summer identified anaphylactic shock in a young girl and a stroke in an older man. So he's got his interests, he's loving it. I also feel that, um, you know, as a parent, we're always worried about our kids. We want to know, what's your plan? What are you gonna do next? Are you going back to school? All these things. But I also feel like he's a 23-year-old boy and he's trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do everything in a linear way and, and, and the way that you might expect. So. So you can kind of tell that I'm quite proud of him. And things are so much better in our family and between him and me in particular. Um, you know, he and I can be kind of stubborn and, <laughs> and uh, but now we understand each other better. Mm -hmm. We still get stuck a little bit in uh, those times where we're not understanding each other's perspective. Mm -hmm. But uh, things are so much better. He's, oh. he's a really great person. That's good to hear. Yeah, thank you for asking that. You're welcome. Do you work with parents with ki with, of kids with autism personally? Yes, I do. So as part of my job, I do a lot of assessments. I do some assessments that for the first time, we're figuring out that a student is on the autism spectrum, and they might have previous diagnosis of attention deficit disorder or obsessive compulsive disorder, lots of, I call it, a diagnostic salad. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. But when you look at it, it truly is the autism spectrum and it makes a lot of sense to me. So then I have to talk to the parents about that, that I've assessed their child, um, their child is on the autism spectrum. And so they come in and meet with me uh, before any group meetings that we have. I do this privately and personally with them. And I talk to them about the spectrum and what the autism spectrum is. Some parents, already know, a lot of parents don't know. They don't know what that is. That, that autism word scares them. So I try to educate them about the breadth of the spectrum and I try to educate them about what helps their child in school, what can help their child learn and help them socially. So that is a very challenging part of my job. It's also a very emotional part of my job. Some parents uh, will cry because they, they are upset, they don't understand. Um, we're still dealing with the stigma around that, that the word autism and the, and the identification of autism. But what I do appreciate is that at times a parent will come around the table and hug me and say, I'm so glad you know what we're going through. I'm so glad you, know, you have had this experience too. So that's helpful to me. We're now going to be joined by uh, fellow author and Sidmander Amla Dabin, who's going to be asking uh, uh, Anne some questions. Yes, so I've read your book. Thank you. And I really liked it, thank you. I, like Stacy, could really uh, empathize with mm -hmm. many things. And uh, well, one question I've had, I had many questions. <laughs> But one question uh, is um, when I was reading the incident about, well, it's, it's a two part. The incident about uh, your child um, taking a, a shower and you mm -hmm. always helped him wash his hair, mm -hmm. right? Did mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And uh, one time uh, there was a little 
something happening, mm -hmm. and he said, no, I'm not going to rush you. Mm -hmm. So he balked very much, mm -hmm. but then he left, and guess what happened? Yeah. He did it. Yeah. So this really touched me, yeah. because to me, and that's my second question, I am not, so, uh, I mean, I think diagnosis, I'm myself on the spectrum, and diagnosis, I'm a two side mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it. And as also you, you, you do tell parents to evaluate yourself and you give diagnosis too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm wondering how do you, s because it seems to me the child then no longer has that opportunity to balk, but be left alone and do it anyway, mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a very, very important mm -hmm. thing as an autistic person, mm -hmm. so I meant to ask. That's such a, a good, deep question. Um, and you know, what I have to say is that a lot of this is parenting, period, mm -hmm. of any kind of child. Um, and the differences in the parenting styles, so I do talk about that in the book where my partner and I have differing styles and that is very, very difficult, especially with a kid who is rigid like that. Um, and I think the incident was that my partner was gone. <laughs> and so it was my turn. And whatever happened, yes, I said, I'm just not going to do it this time. And, you know, and I risked a meltdown or a tantrum, you know, an outburst. Uh, and like you say, it was a done deal. He, he clearly could do it. So in terms of the diagnosis or... School psychologists are a little careful with that word because we're not medical doctors, so we say that we identify mm -hmm. um, autism spectrum for mm -hmm. uh, eligibility for special education. That, that's what we do. Um, and it's, it's such a good question because I think it applies to raising kids on the spectrum and raising neurotypical kids. It's, you have to set your expectations at some level and then they generally meet them. Does that answer that, or do you want to ask me some more about that? You have to set, repeat that last part. You have to set your expectations for their behavior high. Mm -hmm. So not, oh, he can't wash his hair. Right. Uh, but you know what, that was a routine. That, that was, the issue around that was, that was his routine, and it was always that way. And so it was changing that routine that was difficult. And sometimes parents, right. it's just easier to go along with the flow. And I had, I had, had enough of that right. routine. Right. Right. So, I understand. Yeah. I, I just feel like it, it adds up the routine thing. To yes. Often to me, a kind of not letting the child be too. So I'm a little bit, I mean, I am of two sides. You know? No, I do understand that. So you mean like, um, I think we're saying the same thing. You mean expecting the child to meet that mm -hmm. expectation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Over the last dozen years or so since your son's diagnosi diagnosis, what have you noticed is a uh, change in the overall understanding of autism in the autistic community? Well, um, as you probably know, the diagnostic category has changed in the, in the DSM. So that, and, and there's also tons of media now about mm -hmm. autism and the spectrum and you know celebrities, kids, that's what grabs people's attention. Um, so the thing that I've noticed the most is that there is absolutely greater awareness of the spectrum. Uh, and maybe we're working toward greater acceptance of people on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I do see that happening. We have a ways to go. Um, but the thing that we still need is that there still are many professionals uh, who don't understand. They still have this really old notion of what autism is, something that we studied in grad school 30 years ago. It's not that. So. So that's where we need to work, is, is understanding the range of needs and the, the, the strengths and, and, and educational and social needs. So, I mean, ultimately I'm, I'm optimistic um, and we have come a long way. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then finally for me, what advice would you give to parents? What resources are available to them when they find out that their child uh, is on the spectrum? Right. When I learned that my child was on the spectrum, you know, I ran to the bookstore, mm -hmm. which is still a good thing to do. You can run to the bookstore, you can run to the library, you can get books. There are authors, there are people on the spectrum now are writing about their life stories. There's excellent, excellent work out there and, and um, 
helpful to parents. So reading is good, but you know now we have the internet and mm -hmm. online communities, and there are online communities. You can go on Facebook in your local area. Chances are you're going to find parents in your school district who are chatting together, and mm -hmm. that is huge advocacy uh, for parents getting what their kids need if they're having difficulties with the school district. Um, and there are community organizations that um, people can look at. So I do encourage parents to reach out. Don't be isolated. We were for many years. Uh, reach out in any way you're comfortable. Books, online, uh, there's support groups for parents. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And are, are, there, are there any upcoming events? Thank you. About my book, there are. I'm doing some readings and some talks. Generally, I'll read a little from the book, and then mm -hmm. we'll do a Q&A. And parents and professionals are welcome. Um, I'm doing a, a talk at Moe's Book in, in Moe's Books in Berkeley uh, in September. Also, the San Francisco Main Library on September 14th. Uh, I'll be at the Marin County Office of Education on October 1st. Then I'm on a Litquake panel on October 9th on the politics of parenting, and that's at the Mill Valley Library. And then finally. I'll be talking at the Ann Martin Center, which is in Emeryville, on October 20th. And all of these things are on my website, which is www.beyondrainman.com. Thanks for asking. Excellent. For our final segment, we will be now joined by uh, Ascend co-chair. Greg Gates will be telling us more about the upcoming uh, Ascend Conference, which Stacy mentioned in our earlier segment. Hi, yes, I'm here to, yes, to plug the Ascend Conference. Ascend's been around for a lot of years now, and one of the things we've done is been a kind of a national leader on putting together conferences on adult autism. And we are about to put on our ninth, and it is called Neurodiversity Leaders 2016, subtitle, Adult Autism Advances. It's going to be a really good program. We've had a string of really strong conferences, and this is going to be another one. We have keynote speech uh, talks by Sandra Williams, who's winner of the Ohio, she's on the autism spectrum, and winner of the Ohio State Governor's Award for Courage for her amazing life story and coming to a position of, uh, coming from the depths of, uh, of difficulty with autism to becoming a leader on the national stage for cultivating uh, young leaders on the autism spectrum. And then we also have another keynote speaker, uh, Hacky Reitman, who's a, a, a physician and the founder of the website, uh, um, what is it called, uh, differentbrains.com, which is a neurodiversity community website. Uh, he's an interesting fellow, a dynamic speaker, and a, a former heavyweight pro, heavyweight boxer, as it happens, called the fighting surgeon. Anyways, that's just our, our, our keynote speakers. We've got a great program of panels and breakout sessions to find more about it. Uh, and to get tickets, go to ascend.org. There'll be a link. There's a link right at the top. Uh, you can click there to get more details on the program and to buy tickets. So hope to see you there. That's October 8th. Uh, so yes, thank you. There you go. Last thing about that, Greg, where will it be held? Ah, thank you. That, it will be held at the Seven Hills Conference Center at San Francisco State University. It's a beautiful room. It's great for people who have uh, sensory issues because there's a lot of natural light. It's, uh, we've had uh, many conferences there in the past. It works well for us. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. If someone wants to find out more information than is available on the website, uh, is there any way of contacting someone with Ascend? Uh, yes, go to the Ascend website and uh, look under Contact Us. There's uh, full contact information available there. Excellent. Including phone numbers. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I believe for this week, this is our show. So uh, for Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. I'm Greg Yates. <laughs> I'm Ann Lord Devin. I'm Ann K. Ross. I'm Stacy Kennedy. Thank you very much. Uh, until we uh, see you again, have a great week or two.